some ways, I could, I think, summarize my contribution this afternoon uh, by saying that all I want to do is really underline the fourth of Charlie Bean's conclusions. Um, uh, I hope you all remember the fourth of his conclusions, uh, which was about the absence of financial institutions from standard macroeconomic models and the problems that that has resulted in. It's, it's basically a problem of uh, the, the fact that uh, in standard macro model, um, the, there's really no room uh, for the financial sector and so there's no room either uh, for financial crisis and it's hard as a result to use that as a basis uh, for understanding uh, the current problems. But fortunately, um, this isn't all of what economics is about. Um, and there are historians, economic historians, um, who actually are quite conscious of the issue of the Great Depression. The crisis raised, um, it seems to me, issues that are still relevant what do you do when big financial institutions collapse? Um, uh, how do you get things going again? Um, and there, if you look at the list of answers, um, there, there are some things that we do now, or that we think about doing now. All of them were done in the early 1930s. When these financial institutions get into difficulties, um, there are then issues who ultimately bears the responsibility for them. Um, and there's a sense in which regulation and supervision are the corollaries of the obligation, if things go really wrong, uh, for somebody to step in and pick up the pieces. And that actor that steps in and picks up the pieces can really only be a national government that is capable of uh, mobilizing the financial resources because national governments can tax, but big institutions uh, really need not only some government to stand behind them, but big governments to stand behind them. The irony of this, I think, uh, when you reflect on it, for some time is that it's actually likely to be, although this is a crisis that clearly originated in the United States with specific problems in the subprime mortgage area, clearly a crisis that originated in the United States, but it's likely to be US financial institutions that derive the, the greatest long-term benefit from the fact that they can be rescued uh, as they were in the uh, scheme that was put together, cobbled together in a few months between September 2008 and the first months of the Obama administration in 2009. You can already see what the future of the world is going to look like um, if you just look at where and who the largest financial institutions in the world are. There was a moment in the 1990s when the largest financial institutions were Japanese. That moment passed away. Um, there was a moment in the 2000s when the largest financial institutions were United States. That moment has also passed away. Uh, the, in terms of, um, of, of uh, assets, uh, in terms of uh, valuation, um, the largest uh, three banks in the world are Chinese banks. Um, and that, I think, is, is uh, part of the story of a shift to states that can really mobilize resources. The United States can do that, China can do that, uh, but smaller countries are going to have difficulties in doing this. We do have, first of all, something that looks like the Depression story. Um, the Depression story uh, was, in a simple way, um, 
really nicely depicted by Charles Kindleberger is the moment of the faltering of international leadership or the passing of the regime from one hegemon to another. Uh, Charlie Kindleberger's famous line uh, was that Britain was willing to stabilize the international financial system in the early 1930s, but unable to do so because Britain's resources were depleted by the war. The United States uh, was able, would have been, might have been able to stabilize the world's economy, but wasn't willing to. And in a sense, after 2007, after the first signs of the crisis, uh, we really had exactly that sort of moment. Um, I think you could really nicely describe that as a Kindleberger moment. Um, who's going to stabilize uh, this system? In the crisis, big, really imperial countries, in other words, BRICS, um, the assertion of power politics does better those kinds of countries do better because they can mobilize uh, resources than small open economies can do. And uh, that, in the end, is why it does seem to me that some of the stories of the 1930s are being, I have to say, unfortunately, replayed in the world of today. Thank you.